Aloha Hawaii and welcome to another version of uh, Hawaii Sports Update here on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here again once with uh, my right hand man, Justin Baptiste. Hello. Justin, glad to have you here. Yeah, and uh, today we'll be going over, uh, you know, some uh, high school football for sure. Uh, and uh, UH is getting ready for their home opener on September 3rd uh, against the University of Colorado. And uh, I think it's going to be a very exciting season for the uh, Rainbow Warriors this year. Uh, they look a lot more athletic. They look a lot quicker. And, uh, you know, we'll be discussing some of those topics. But let's get uh, right to high school first. Uh, the top ten and uh, uh, star advertisers top ten uh, has Mililani still at number one. And then they have St. Louis and Punahou tied for number two now with uh, Kahuku at number four. Kamehameha at number five, Farrington six, uh, Iolani seven, Kapolei eight, uh, number nine is Kapa'a, and uh, the Kailua uh, has just crept into the top ten. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Mililani, of course, uh, they started out the season at, at, at max preps uh, on a national scale, uh, ranked 18th, and before they even played a game, they... Uh, moved up to the number seven spot and now they are currently sitting at number six and the max preps national uh, ranking so uh, it's always good to have a team from Hawaii uh, in the top ten nationally of course and uh, we're looking to uh, see some big things from Mililani this year also in the top 40 uh, is uh, they have St. Louis at number 30 and um, at number 37 they have Punahou uh, ranked and you know uh, nationally so all, all three of those teams uh, they are the top three teams uh, ranked in the state and uh, you know one of those guys are going to get knocked off and one of those guys are going to win the state championship perhaps but I still think that uh, we're going to hear a lot of noise from Kahuku and uh, possibly Kamehameha and Farrington too so uh, I believe that the uh, you know state championship is still wide open uh mckenzie milton looked awesome of course uh you know they put up 73 points against mckinley and um you know justin uh you have some of the statistics for from uh mckenzie uh, yeah um yeah. mckenzie uh he threw for 137 yards and three touchdowns mm -hmm. uh, you know mckenzie milton is uh you know really really starting to heat up this year you know, we're going to expect to see big things out of him, especially uh, with his throwing, his scrambling. Uh, this guy can do it all. Um, we know that he verbally committed to the University of Hawaii. So if he can really keep this up, I think he could really be a big piece to the University of Hawaii football team as the years to come. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing him play this year. And, uh, yeah, big things are going to happen for him. Okay. Well, you know, just, just on a personal level or, or just from observing uh, what I've seen from Mililani, uh, you know, they, they have that weapon in Bavai Maliapai. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, against some of the better teams, uh, you know, when they get down to it, uh, I, I definitely think that they're going to have to use him more as a weapon. Uh, uh, Mackenzie Milton is definitely a f formidable quarterback, but, you know, you, you have to have that running game to open up the passing game just a little bit more, and uh, th they need to uh, use him, in my eyes, just a little bit more. Uh, especially, you know, like I said, when, when, when they start playing the tougher teams, that they're, they're going to need Bavai Malapai to uh, to uh, chew up some yards on the ground, and he can also catch the ball out of the backfield. Now, of course, uh, like we said, number one ranked Mililani beat McKinley 73-14, to and then uh, number four Kahuku uh, took on number seven Kapolei 27-7, to and uh, Kapolei is, is the eighth ranked team right now. Uh, on the new poll, but last week there were seven, and Farrington uh, was ranked number six, and uh, they beat Waipahu 46-6, to six. and then the Surf Riders, of course, got in the top ten, Kailua uh, beating Leila, who 27-14, to 14. and uh, I always have to mention uh, the Na'ali'i, where my daughter went to school. Uh, they beat Kaiser 47-43, uh, to 43. and now Kaiser was ranked in the top 10 at the beginning of the season, and now they've dropped their first two games. Um, you know, I, I don't know what's going on over there. I know they lost their starting quarterback right before the season started, and, um, you know, that, that's a tough deal for them over there at Kaiser. 
Yeah, Kaiser, um, you know, with their success that they've been having recent, um, yeah, it's tough for Kaiser uh, to be in this predicament as they are. Um, we know that they have the talent um, to, to do big things. Uh, it all started with uh, Rich Miano being the head coach. Right. He started the foundation with Kaiser. So um, with Kaiser being at the standpoint that they're at right now, um, all it takes is a few good players, and I think they'll be right back to where they were. Well, you know, the, of course, the most highly touted player is Michael Ellis Diaz, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, uh, he's, he, he's a Pac-12 commit, and uh, but he's an offensive lineman, so, you know, right. he, 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 can't, he can't carry the ball. He, he can't get the ball in the end zone, even though I wouldn't doubt if he could. <laughs> he's that much of an athlete, but, uh, you know, they, they're going to have to find a way to exploit, uh, you know, the their, their strengths a little bit more, and we'll see what happens down the line. It's still yeah. early for them, but definitely losing their quarterback at right. the beginning of the season was huge. But the thing that the thing that I like about you know high school football is that you know it's always great that you have players who have so much talent that can do you know what you're supposed to do on the field, and uh, you know you can make a name for yourself and go on to play college pro, go on to play college and. Uh, Get onto the pro, so it's always good to be able to, you know, have players who can, you know, demonstrate um, for other players to, you know, inspire them or motivate them. Because just because you know we have Alipay at Kaiser, you know, there's gonna be a whole bunch of other players like Alipay. So, you know, it's always good to look at that as an example and uh, motivate yourself for the future. Absolutely, and, and of course it's up to the coaches to keep those kids in the classroom and, and keep them motivated academically also because, uh, you know, a, a total of, well not a total, but the percentage of, of people going, getting a four-year uh, college scholarship is uh, less than 10%, wow. and then it's even less than 3% or turning into a professional. So, mm. uh, you know, to me, uh, being an ex-athlete, I, I think it comes um, hand in hand, you know, when, when you discipline yourself in the classroom and, 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 and then you discipline yourself at, on the field, that goes hand in hand as, as a progression moves up. And, um, you know, just from what I've seen and, and, and from what, what I've been around, you know, those who were able to discipline themselves in both ways uh, ha have a better shot at eventually winding up in the pros. Because if you lack one of those disciplines, either uh, in the classroom or on the field, you know, uh, it, you know it, it sort of trickles down. So, you know, the, the odds are already stacked against you uh, as far as being a professional and also getting a four-year college scholarship. So, you know, you just have to be disciplined in both in both areas, and it's just important for kids to know that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, of course, we wish everybody good luck. And, and you know, m most of the kids from Hawaii, uh, you, you know, you don't hear about them getting in trouble. Uh, you know, off the field issues and stuff like that. You know, um, uh, Hawaii is a solid family foundation, and uh, you know, most of the kids uh, grow up here. Uh, you know, calling everybody uh, uncle and auntie, and have respect for for elders and stuff like that. And uh, people from the mainland, uh, you know, that we we don't take that for granted because you know that it's not like that on the mainland. Man. It's more of a exactly. sort of a cutthroat attitude yeah. and everybody for themselves, but it's more of a family uh, atmosphere in Hawaii, and, and I think that's good, and, and that's also part of the piece of the pie that helps everybody's progression. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting high school football season this year, and, uh, you know, like I say, it, 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 to me it's wide open. Um, Milan is not the clear-cut number one. And, uh, you know, anybody in the top five, uh, even all the way down to Farrington, uh, has a chance to beat uh, any team on any given day. So uh, we'll see what week three turns up, and um, it's going to be very interesting. Now, uh, you know, UH football is getting closer and closer. Uh, Justin, yes, sir. Uh, you know, we've been out to a few practices, and, uh, you know, the, the thing that I've noticed from the years in the past, uh, first of all, you know, Norm Chow is... Uh, you know, when you look at his resume, um, it's unquestionable. You know that uh, he he knows what to do with talent. You know, you all you go all the way back to USC, UCLA, even as far back as Brigham Young, uh, North Carolina State, David Rivers. I mean, you can just keep going on and on and on. But I just think it was too much of a burden for him to. Uh, 
you know, be the offensive coordinator and the head coach. Right. And of course, he's relinquished those duties to Don Bailey, who came from a very successful uh, program in, in college. And you know, when when we interviewed him and, and spoke to him, he he was talking about you know UH running uh, you know at least 80 plays a game. And, and the tempo, you know, if you watch them during practice, that's one of the main keys, tempo, tempo, tempo. So they're going to play a lot faster this year. Um, uh, the, the, I think they're going to be throwing the ball a lot more, of course, with uh, transfer Max Whitted coming over from USC. Uh, that's just huge, you know. Uh, everybody who I've talked to and spoken to on the team offensively and defensively says that, you know, this guy is a leader and he just brings a calming and confident uh, uh, effect, especially, uh, you know, taking over control of the huddle and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I just think that uh, if UH can get out of the preseason healthy, that, you know, uh, they probably have a chance to contend, uh, you know, for the Mountain West title, actually, with, with the athletes that they do have. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, Max Wittex, uh, you know, he actually played against UH uh, before transferring to Hawaii, yes. so that's interesting, uh, you know, in that perspective. But, you know, Max Wittick, he, he looks very, he looks very poised in the pocket. Uh, he's playing smart, every practice, uh, very professional. Um, looking forward to seeing him play this year. Um, this is his senior season, so we'll have to see how he does throughout the year. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, guy's has, the guy has talent. The guy can play. Absolutely. So we'll have to see how the team gels around him, especially the offense. And we'll have to see how the defense does as well, too. So looking yeah, well, forward to uh, UH. Yeah, um, the, you know, the, the defense really, you know, it hasn't been too much of a problem uh, underneath the, the tutelage of Norm Chow. It's just that they're, they're on the field too much. Right. You know, when, when, when you have a lot of three and outs and, uh, of course, you know, Joey Iacepa, who uh, is currently with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but he had to serve a little suspension for, for a DUI last year, and, and that hurt the team uh, tremendously. Uh, he was really the only their, their only offensive weapon exactly. last year, right? And so when he went down, that just put more pressure on the defense. But um, you know, w w when you look at their schedule, you know they open up, uh, of course, at home against Colorado, and then uh, you know I, I like at the three the three road games that they have. That that you know, I mean, if anybody in the country had these three road games, it would be tough. And that's September twelfth at Ohio State. Okay, and then they come back and they play UC Davis at home, and then they go back on the road and play uh, at Wisconsin. Uh, and then the, the week after that, I believe they play uh, at Boise State. Okay, and wow, that's you know that's that that's the tough three games right there. And uh, you know, hopefully, like I said, uh, that that they will come out healthy, um, especially at Ohio State and at Wisconsin. And, and give them an opportunity to try to succeed in the Mountain West Conference this year. They have eight returning starters on offense, uh, even though uh, uh, Kaiko Woosley, is, is who, who was a starter last year, we already know Max Winnick has taken over that. But to me, the key uh, of, for the starters coming back on offense is the three guys on the offensive line. And that starts with uh, uh, Ben Clark, uh, Brandon Urban, and of course, Dijon Allen. And uh, you know, with, with with those three guys healthy, uh, the two newcomers coming in to to fill that role uh, will make them a cohesive unit. And uh, everybody knows that everything starts with the offensive line. It doesn't matter how much talent you have as a running back, how much talent you have as a quarterback, or how talented your receivers are on the on the outside. If your quarterback doesn't have time to throw the ball, or the holes aren't developing there. Um, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. So the, everything starts with the offensive line, and, and I think that's what the key is, uh, you know, to their success mm -hmm. this year. And some of the goals that some of the players that I've talked to uh, that they want to achieve, such as uh, Ben Clark, um, you know, win games, get to the bowl game, uh, such as um, St. Just, he also wants to get to the bowl game as well, too, and uh, get to the championship. And also with Naquan, um, all conference, and you know, win games and get to a bowl game. So they all have that bowl game mindset. So we'll have to see how they do this year to get to a bowl game. Well, you know, after not being in a bowl for a while, and, and of course, they, they created the Hawaii Bowl because of the success that 
Hawaii had underneath the tutelage, of course, of June Jones. And, you know, so now, now that they've created this bowl, you know, uh, it, it, would, uh, it would be awesome, of course, for uh, UH to get back into it. And then that will fill up the stands, that will fill up the stadium over there on uh, Christmas Eve. And, um, you know, everybody wants to see their home team in, in, in their home bowl game. And I think it is a very uh, feasible uh, uh, to, for, for them to, you know, a, a feasible goal, excuse me, um, you know that, that that they can that they can make it uh, to, to a ball game. Um, exactly. You know that they just have to win ha half of their games, and uh, if they do that, then they'll be in the ball game. Yes, sir. But like I said, it starts with the offensive line. Uh, but you know, just through observation, uh, you know, Kemp is a beast. Uh, Vasquez Haynes is a beast. Um, D Dylan Colley is just uh, you know. You know, and if you look at his pedigree, of course, with his two brothers, you know, one in the NFL and one who's currently in the Canadian Football League, but uh, you could just, when you speak to him, you could just see that confidence in him. I think this guy has a high football IQ. Uh, he's very smart, and um, you know, with him surrounded with those other two athletes on the outside, and with the, and with Max Wittig, and of course. Uh, the Osmi St. Just, uh, Don Bailey is just super excited about him. This guy had some big runs last year, and he's really looking forward to them, for him, excuse me, to, uh, you know, have some huge runs for him. And the offensive scheme that, that UH is coming out with this year, playing quicker, playing faster, getting more plays out, uh, it's definitely going to open up the field for him. And a guy like that, all he needs is uh, space and opportunity. And uh, you know I, I'm I'm really looking forward and getting more excited as it gets closer to, to see what UH is going to put out there. Um, you know, of course they have the uh, 75 touchdowns. You know, and, and you know the, the, that's not a, a, a goal per se that they have to reach, but you know that's something to throw out there to give these guys incentive. And so after you know um, Coach Bailey told me that. I just went back and looked, and you know, uh, that's that's a little bit more than five touchdowns a game, and and I, I think that's they can accomplish that. I know, agree, especially within the new system. Right. Yes, and then um, you know, so uh, to, you know, they got Stephen Lackalacka, of course, uh, as a backup, and uh, you know, they, they are, to me, they just have to stay healthy, and uh, you know, special teams, of course, Keelan Ibalinko, uh the boy out of Maui. Uh, He's, a, he's also a backup a wide receiver. Um, you know, the, the, the talent pool is there. You know, the, like we said, this is Norm Child's fourth year, and, you know, you, you, you can see it starting to develop. You, you can see it starting to develop a little bit towards the end of last year. But uh, now that they're off to a fresh new start this year, um, I, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what, what they can accomplish. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do this year. And you got to give big props to Norm Child. Uh, with the pedigree that he has and the resume that he has, uh, coaching five um, Heisman, uh, you know, quarterbacks, and uh, having the opportunity to be the offensive coordinator in many different places, coach Vince Young. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned, this is his fourth um, season, and we we'll have to see how he and we have to see how he does this year. And he also coached in Utah as well too. Absolutely, he yeah. coached in Utah. Yeah. So. And, and Utah's now in the Pac-12. I mean, you know, like, like I said, his, his resume is, is so deep. And you know, when, when you have guys like Norm Chow and back in the, you know, back in, in the days with, with June Jones, what, what people don't realize is when, when, when you have resources like that and when you have success like that, that's when you can go get a guy uh, from USC uh, at, you know, hey, Max Whitick, man, of course I want to play in Norm Chow's uh, you know, offensive scheme. You know, th this guy is sitting over there at USC with, with three quarterbacks. Uh, you know that that are probably going to be ahead of. Him. I mean, USC's freshman quarterback Towns. He he just transferred. So I mean, how deep is the pool at, at USC exactly. you know, for quarterback? Right. But these are people who can still play and play at a high level in college. And when when you have the resume uh, that Norm Chow has or that per se, June Jones had, you know, when he got Cole Brennan and Pia Tia Sonoma and, and, you know, when, when you have that already established, 
guys like that are jumpy and willing to come over and play because they know that these coaches can also get you to the next level. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be at a program like USC or UCLA to get to the next level because these guys have taught um, uh, college kids and, and they've been very successful and they've gotten kids into the NFL too. Right. So, you know, uh, you know, with, with that being said, um, you know, I, I really look forward to, uh, you know, just seeing what's going to happen. Uh, we're going to go on a commercial break real quick, and uh, when we come back on the other side, uh, we'll be talking some NFL football, and we'll talk about a little bit about the bowls and the pros here on Hawaii Sports Update. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tank Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the basis of what's right and what's good and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Welcome back to Hawaii Sports Update. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you want to chime in or anything like that, and uh, you know, you want to tweet the show, go ahead and, and tweet us at Think Tech HI, and uh, you know, chime in on the conversation. Uh, before we went on the commercial break, of course, we were talking about UH football, and uh, you know, the, uh, presently right now, there's there's two uh, former uh, Rainbow Warriors in in the NFL, and that of course being Joey Iacefa and uh, Greg Salas, and then of course there's three in the Canadian Football League, um, Chad Owens, who has been an MVP type of player, uh, Brian Moniz, who took over after the Colt Brennan era and, and was a very successful quarterback within his own right, and of course uh, last year's uh, MVP, only defensive MVP in the Canadian Football League, and his brother is the defensive back coach, uh, Solomon Elamimian, and of course his brother Abe just came over to join the Rainbow Warriors coaching staff this year, so. Uh, and also Francis uh, Maka, and also uh, Michael, Wa Michael Washington as well, and Shane Austin. Yeah, but that's arena football. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not Canadian. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you know, the, the, I'm not taking anything away from it, but right. you know, uh, we're you know, the arena football league is arena football. Yeah. You know, but it's all good. Um, mm -hmm. Now, before we get into some I NFL stuff, uh, I, I just wanted to say that uh, you know, and and Central Iowa, we're talking about. Uh, College World Series Little League, okay? And, and, and let me explain this scenario a little bit here. It, it's, uh, you know, the, the, the coach asked the team to pretty much throw a game so that they wouldn't have to, uh, you know, face this, this team that, that they had a tough, tough time against, who they had already beaten. But you just throw all that out of the window, man. This is a Little League game, okay, with 11 and 12 year old girls. Okay, you know, how, why would you want to strategize and, and, and instill that into, into 11 and 12 year old kids' heads uh, about, you know, come on, man, just, let, just line them up, let the kids go out there and play and see what happens. That's what competition, that's what sportsmanship, that's what everything is all about. And, you know, the, these coaches, and, 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 and I just don't understand it, man. Yeah, I don't understand it either. I mean, let the kids play and, uh, let the kids, you know, learn from these coaches the right way to play because, you know, that's not good sportsmanship and that's not how you go about playing anything. You just, that's the wrong way of doing things. Absolutely. That, that's not what Little League is all about. You yeah. Know? I mean, 
it, it, you know, just let the kids line up and play, you know. How, how are you going to sit your four best players, tell the kids to bunt? I mean, it was just all kinds of stuff going on. And, you know, I think they need to screen some of the coaches, you know. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's just ridiculous to me how you can instill that into a, into a child's brain. Yeah. But, you know, maybe that's just me. Um, let, let's move on to the NFL okay. now. Now, right off the bat, uh, Eli Manning wants to be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Well, uh, given the fact that Eli Manning uh, hasn't had, uh, I think, two seasons where he hasn't done much to help the team out, um, I don't feel like that's uh, the right frame of mind at the moment right now. We all know that we all know that Eli Manning is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and we know that he can play, and we know that he's had um, winning success and he's had success. But um, yeah, he can be the highest paid quarterback, but I just feel like he has to, uh, you know, produce more and get more wins for the season and get more wins for his team. Okay, well, th this is my gripe. Yeah. You know, everyone's going to grumble about Russell Wilson. Okay, now he he made back-to-back -back Super Bowls. They could say it's the system. They could say whatever. But in the first, his first three years of the season, no one has been as successful as him. Everybody knows the quarterback is what runs the team. Okay, you know, it, you, you don't have to uh, have like Dan Marino type numbers to be a successful quarterback. So let's get that straight. Okay, now the top five salaries in the NFL for quarterbacks is Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, Rivers and Newton, okay, and there's something that that is that has to say about the the first three, of course, because they're Super Bowl champions, okay. But let's get one thing straight: uh, what, as you get older in age, okay, then you, you know your game starts to digress, exactly. okay. Now Russell Wilson is ten years younger than Eli Manning, okay, but the Giants haven't made the playoffs in the last three years, exactly. So how how can you miss the playoffs over the last three years? And then justify yourself trying to say that you, you want to be the highest paid quarterback. Yes, Hi, I'm Chris Letham, and, and I'd like to invite uh, you to come. You won two Super Bowls on two catches, you know, that didn't really, I mean, <laughs> they had a little bit to do with him. But exactly. I, they, I think it had more to do with the receivers. And, it, you know, it, it's just funny to me how, how the media just, you know, pumps up certain players and, and, then, and then just tries to, you know, degrade other guys. Right. And, and I, I just don't get it. Uh, on a personal level, I don't think Eli Manning is in the top ten quarterbacks in the league right now. Um, not even close, you know. And, and the, he has the statistics to back it up. Everyone's talking about Geno Smith and, and the New York Jets, but uh, three years ago, Eli Manning threw more interceptions than Geno Smith. So you tell me what's happening with that. Yeah, and it doesn't make any sense uh, that, they're, that they're trying to brag on Geno Smith. I mean, we all know that Geno Smith, uh, you know, took the reins over Mark Sanchez, which I felt Mark Sanchez should have been the, should have been still the starting quarterback for the Jets. I don't feel like it was a good opportunity or a good mindset to have to draft Geno Smith and have to start him over Mark Sanchez, where Mark Sanchez got the team into the... Uh, playoffs for the past three years Absolutely. such as quarterbacks such as Joe Flacco and, and Matt Ryan right you know so I just feel like they're just they're just trying to bring Gino down and make him sound bad but my, my honest uh, opinion is um, you know it shouldn't go that way let right. Gino get healthy win your job back prove them wrong and they won't have to talk about you anymore right. and, and you know and, and i'm not sitting here trying to back geno smith up saying that he's a top 10 quarterback or anything like right that. his exactly. statistics don't prove that but what i'm saying is uh, eli manning's statistics over the last three seasons definitely don't prove for him to be the highest paid quarterback right. in the nfl not even close right and when you're the highest paid quarterback to me it has to be on how you how you produce and if you produce well then i feel like that gets you the highest pay well what what it does it it comes down to w's right you know it comes down to wins you know it, 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 if, if you can win the game you know for your team no matter what situation and and you're putting w's on the board well then that's going to bring more money exactly and you know russell wilson in his first three years have one has won 36 games i mean 
you know, you, you can say it's it's the scheme, it's 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 Pete Carroll's system or whatever, but somebody still has to get underneath the center and execute it and 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 make it come to fruition on the football field. And you can't take anything away from Russell Wilson because he's done that. Right. And you know, I mean that there were there were <laughs> uh, there were 15 or 20 seconds away from winning back-to-back -back Super Bowls. I mean, and when's the last team that had that's done that? Was the Patriots, I believe. And um, you know, Russell Wilson, if that pass is complete, they win it. Or if they ran the ball with Marshawn Lynch, that would have been a different story too. Absolutely, but you know, on on on, on that, um, you know, I don't want to blame. Pete Carroll 100% because, like I said, Russell Wilson is the quarterback, okay? He could uh, he could have took that snap and just threw the ball out of bounds, but he wanted to fit it in there, okay? So, I mean, Pete Carroll called the play, you know, and it's half his fault for calling the play, but it's still half Russell Wilson's fault for throwing the ball in the traffic, man. I mean, you know, if that would have been an incomplete pass, they would have been sitting there third down, right? There, the time would have been off the clock, and then they could have gave the ball to Marshawn Lynch. But, you know, he felt that he could fit it into that six-inch window, and it got intercepted, yeah. you know. And so, you know, everybody wants to blame one guy or the other, but I blame both of them. Right. Because, you know, uh, I don't think Pete Carroll would have been upset one single bit if Russell Wilson would have took that ball and just threw it out of bounds. Exactly. I don't think he would have been upset at all. Right. Okay. But when, when you, you know, m make that decision to try to fit that ball a into that window with the game on the line, you know, you, you better be right. And, uh, if not, then that's just the reason why we're sitting here talking about it right now. Mm -hmm. But like I said, if he, if he would have just threw the ball out of bounds, I don't think we would be talking about it right now. Exactly. Yes, Seattle would have won back-to-back -back championships. Right. So um, I think they're sort of both to blame on that. And, uh, you know, I hope Russell Wilson learned uh, his lesson, you know. And, you know, he, all the great quarterbacks, Peyton Manning, uh, you know, all these guys improvise at the line because the coach can't be right all the time, you know. And, and, and coaches know that. It, as big as these guys' egos are and stuff like that, like I said, if Russell Wilson would have just threw that ball, even, you know, in the end zone, uh, uh, or, I mean, out of the end zone, and it would have been third, third and one, I mean, who would have been complaining? Exactly. The only reason that we're talking about it is because it got picked up. Right. So, you know, you have to keep that in mind. Right. But, um, I sort of blame both of those guys, like I said. Now, Chris Johnson comes back. He signs with the Cardinals. Um, you know, the, the Cardinals are the only team in the NFL over the last three or four seasons that haven't even had a 700-yard rusher. Uh, Carson Palmer's been down. Uh, you know, uh, with some injuries over the past two years. And when, when I first seen that statistic, it, it, it just jumped out to me. Now, with Carson Palmer out, uh, how do you not have a running back who hasn't had over 700 yards? I mean, in the, in the last three or four seasons, that's, that was pretty amazing to me. But I definitely know uh, Chris Johnson can have 700 yards in the first half of the season if he's healthy. And, uh, you know, this guy is still one of the fastest guys in the NFL. He's durable. Uh, he, he, he doesn't get hurt very often, especially in running back terms. Um, you know, he, he did get shot in the offseason um, during some uh, unfortunate accident, but he's came back and said that, you know, that this has taught him a lesson and, and actually gave him a perspective about, you know, uh, just, just how, you know, how, how great of a position that, that, that he is in life. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, you know, what do you think about Chris Johnson coming back and signing with the Arizona Cardinals? Well, I feel like the Cardinals are going to uh, add more depth to their roster. Uh, Chris Johnson is one of the uh, running backs where, you know, he, just, he can, uh, he's agile, he's, um, you know, he's, he's motivated. And uh, Chris Johnson is, is one of the fastest guys, like you mentioned, in the NFL. He can do it all. He can break tackles. He can burst through the hole. You can do the whole nine yards. So I'm expecting Chris Johnson to have a very, very productive season this year for the Cardinals. And I'm expecting the Cardinals to also be in the playoffs this year and having a very good season for themselves. And, uh, you know, we're gonna, we, we know we're, we're, we're going to expect from Larry Fitzgerald, you know, good big numbers from him. And Carson's going to have a very good season. 
Um, I expect a lot of uh, touchdowns from him. Well, the, you know, the thing is with Carson Palmer is just staying healthy. You know? Right. And, and we know if Carson Palmer is healthy and he's in there, you know, hey, I, I, he's one of my fantasy guys, man. You know, it's, okay. uh, he, he can put numbers on the board when, when he's healthy. Yeah. But, you know, he's had the tendency to get hurt the last couple of years, but Carson Palmer is definitely... Uh, I, you know, I, I would put a healthy Carson Palmer over Eli Manning any day right now, Same without here. a doubt. Right. No doubt in my mind. I would too. Okay. Now, um, man, why why is everybody even talking about Tim Tebow? Can you tell me that? No comment. Well, you got to have a comment because we're on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess you know Tim Tebow's made a comeback. You know, I feel like the Florida Gator quarterback has been out of the league, and I feel like a lot of people still have a lot of love and uh, faith in Tim Tebow to do well, and I think that uh, if he continues to do well, I think he's going to be back in the NFL. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to answer. I'm going to put my two cents in on that on the other side, but we're going to go on a commercial break right now, and when we come back, uh, we'll be finishing up on this Tim Tebow uh, experiment uh, on the other side of Hawaii Sports Update. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen. I'm the host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about why people should like science, why science is actually fun, how science is a dynamic and vital part of everyone's life, why everyone, every man, woman, and child on the planet should really know science, should love science, should be familiar with science. So it's a great show. People come on here and have interesting conversations with us. They tell us why they do what they do, why they love it, why we should love it, too. I hope you'll join us every Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. And, of course, you can see it anytime on YouTube. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I host a show called Healthcare in Hawaii here on ThinkTech. We get together once a week or sometimes uh, twice a month. Depends. When we're busy, we get together less often. But we love to see you here to talk about the preeminent healthcare issues in our state. Our programs vary very widely. We talk about economics, we talk about health care, we talk about social issues on this program. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to Hawaii Sports Update. And if you're just joining us here, you can tweet the show at ThinkTechHI, chime in on the conversation. Uh, before we left, we were just talking about Tim Tebow and, uh, you know, him coming back to the NFL. And, uh, you know, a a as critical as people want to be about quarterbacks, uh, no one wants to be critical of this guy, and I, I'm just sorry. Um, you know, uh, he was a great college quarterback. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, I seen his debut with the Eagles, and he didn't look good to me. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, uh, I, I could have completed those five and ten yard passes I know you that he could've. completed. I know you could have. But when you're talking about throwing the ball down the field more than 15 yards, he's brutal. Right. And, and it's as simple as that. You know, I mean, he's 245 pounds. He can run the ball, you know, but for him being a professional NFL quarterback, man, you guys just cut it out already, exactly. man. Exactly. Uh, I mean, it, I mean, really, it's it's just I, I don't understand it. There's a lot of uh, great college quarterbacks, and then there's some that just don't do well in the NFL, and we well, know that he's one of them. Yeah, well, you know, if you look at the scheme, of course, back then with uh, Urban Meyer, you know, in Florida, uh, yeah, uh, he was a great, great college quarterback. I'm not taking anything away from him, but he's definitely not an NFL quarterback. Mm -hmm. right. now, now, speaking of NFL quarterbacks, um, did you see Jamison Winston's debut? Yes. And Marcus Mariota? Yes. yes. Okay, now, now those two guys, even though they struggled, they, they, they're going to be good NFL quarterbacks, mm -hmm. okay? It, it's a little bit different when you're, holding, when you're going through your progressions and you're holding on to the ball and you're getting sacked with four and a half seconds gone off the clock like Tim Tebow is, or, you know, you're just making a couple mm -hmm. of overthrows and stuff like that. But Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota, you know, for, for their debuts, they did fine. You know, they're, they're learning their systems, and um, I, I think they're both going to be... Uh, in the NFL for a long time. Yeah, my uh, my opinion on that is, uh, you know, Marcus Mariota and Jamison Winston, uh, they both had very impressive preseason debuts. Uh, you know, what it is right now, they're showing a little bit of nerve. You know, they're getting used to this. Mm -hmm. And I feel like both of the quarterbacks are going to do very well for the rookie season, and I feel like they're going to have a very successful NFL season. And uh, 
We'll have to see how they do for yeah. the teams. Well, it, 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 it's, it's a positive, be it a high number, a, a high pick, and it's a negative, okay? The positive is the money and that you're going to get the opportunity to play. Exactly. But there's a reason why you're the number one or two pick is because your teams weren't that good. Right. Okay. So when you come in and, you know, y y you're playing on a, on a team that hasn't been successful, and in Tampa Bay and Tennessee's uh, case, they haven't been successful for a few years now, you know, um, you, that's something that you have to build on. You know, exactly. like, like, for instance, you take Teddy Bridgewater last year. I, I, I always thought that Teddy Bridgewater was probably the best professional prospect coming out of the, the draft the year before, and it proved to be right. I mean, if you look at all the rookie quarterbacks from last year, Teddy Bridgewater is probably the most solid one, right. you know, uh, statistically. And now that Adrian Peterson's back, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be uh, that, that he's going to even have a better season than he had last year. If you look at his last seven games or last six games, he was uh, hitting at 65% and his touchdowns went up. And so it's, ju it's definitely a progression. And if you look at Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota, you will see that uh, consistently throughout their career, they progress, exactly. you know, at each step and each level. And, and when, co when college scouts come in and look at that, you know, that's one of the, definitely one of the things that they look at is progression. How, how, how much can this kid learn? How much can this kid absorb? And, and, and how much can he take that onto the field? Right. And I'm looking forward to uh, the successful season uh, from uh, Teddy Bridgewater. The guy that has been just playing absolutely well in the preseason, making his throws. Uh, you know, moving around the pocket, scrambling, doing what he needs to do. But he's going to have a very successful season for the Vikings. And I'm also looking forward to uh, seeing Adrian Peterson playing well and playing hard. I also, wanna, I want to give a shout out to uh, Eric Berry. We know he suffered uh, cancer. Absolutely. Uh, he was in treatment for um, for such a quiet time, but good to see him back. Yeah, Eric Berry. Uh, more power to you, brother. Last thing before we get out of yeah. here. Um, the NFL extra point rule, good or bad? Nah. Keep it the game, the game. Keep it the keep it the traditional way. Okay, so you think they should don't just try to confuse people now. Come on now. Okay, I mean, you think they should just light it up from the two yard line and, and kick a 20, 20 yard extra point? Yeah, either, either way, you know, okay. to keep the field goal. Yeah, I mean, you know, people have people have their their, their goods and bads. I mean, in, in a way, having to kick a thirty three yard field goal, you see that there's been a couple extra misses already this season. So you know. I don't think that you should just really have a courtesy point. I mean, you know, that's just my point of view. Right. You know, uh, if, if, and, and what it's going to do is it's going to make teams go for two more often. And then that's going to change a lot of the scoring and, and it's going to change a lot of the strategy down, you know, towards right. the end of the game. But we'll see. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's definitely going to happen this year and uh, we'll definitely see. Once again, Justin, it was. Good to have you on the show, Same here. Appreciate always, everybody watching the show today. Always Much welcome love. you here. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Right. And you know how we do it here on Hawaii Sports Update. Uh, who we hold.